you just need to look around you and, and realize that there's, it's such a unique place. And it's hugely productive, yet it is still vulnerable. I don't see that we quite learned from our mistakes previously. And so I think it's about time we did really. The Antarctic is just such an incredibly biodiverse and unique region and it supports, particularly in the summer, so many different species. So what our research is hoping to show is the estimates of species richness in these different regions and it really should feed into the sort of larger research um, program within the Southern Oceans and throughout the whole region. And we'll be able to use those data in future as a baseline for future monitoring so we can look at for instance, whether there are shifts in species distributions and whether we might be finding either unique, rare, cryptic species or invasive species. And all of this research is really necessary to, because we need to be able to understand what lives here, how those species might be changing in relation to human activities and climate change, for instance. We all know that really we need to have this really well-managed network of protected areas throughout the global ocean so that we can conserve biodiversity. eDNA stands for environmental DNA. As an animal passes through this area that where we're sampling, it leaves behind its shed skin, mucus, poo, whatever it is that it's left from its body, and we will hopefully collect it on our, our filter and get an estimate of species richness in this particular area. This technique uh, allows you to detect species that you otherwise won't be able to observe since they are sneaky or too small to be observed from a boat or something like that. We can sample uh, in half an hour and uh, do an inventory of the entire surroundings. It's an emerging technology, so it's great that we can help develop that method and also really feed some quite critical data into our, you know, the larger research program that is ongoing in Antarctica. We were lucky enough to, to sight a humpback whale. The humpback whale was logging at the surface, so resting, and then at one point it fluked up and we were able to collect some photo ID shots of that whale, just of the fluke, which will be a, a really good way of individually identifying it as um, within a, all the whales that are in this area. There are catalogues of humpback whales around Antarctica and what we will do is pass our photograph of our whale on to other people working in the area so that they can try and identify where that whale was seen before or may maybe it might be seen in the future and that'll all be because we managed to collect a really good photo ID shot. I've never seen whales um, this this close by. Uh, I've never seen this many whales in my whole life, and I think it's just really touching to hear the whale just hear it breathe. But at the same time, it's quite a sad thought when you realize that these areas are not protected. What is done in other parts of the world uh, can be seen here when it comes to pollution, different chemicals. Uh, we have had already for some years been taking samples with microfibers or microplastics, even like the PFAs, it's the chemical compounds that are used in uh, waterproofing, for example, outdoor gear. Um, and that's something that we have also found in this pristine environment. You would think that this area is pristine and you would think that in a, such a small volume of seawater, like two and a half litres, you know, it should be clean. Yet, previous work by Greenpeace has shown that there are microfibers within these waters. And all of that is to do with 
human activities from really far away places, yet it's still impacting in areas here. Looking at how the oceans have changed over the last sort of 25 years, it is quite a sorry state of affairs that we're still trying to manage the oceans sustainably and we still really haven't put biodiversity conservation first in that list of priorities. Actually, as humans, we need to have healthy functioning oceans for food security, for climate change mitigation, um, for, for our well-being. It's time we um, put conservation first. It seems obvious to me.